Hello everyone, my name is Ege Tekinar. I was working as a research assistant in Cyber Physical Systems Security Lab at Florida International University and right now I am working as a blockchain security researcher at Crypto.com. Today I will be presenting our paper with the title A Lightweight AT Crypto Checking Detection Mechanism in Heterogeneous Smart Home Networks. And here is my outline. I will start with the introduction and cover some background information over there. Then we explained our adversary model and attack scenarios. After that, I will give some brief information about our methodology of IoT cryptojacking detection via network traffic. Then I will be presenting our data collection process. And finally, we summarize with the overall evaluation results and conclude the presentation in conclusion. Let's start with introduction. Cryptojacking is basically an act of using victims' processing power without their knowledge and consent. And we generalize their target coverage under two main domains, in-browser cryptojacking and host-based cryptojacking. And actually, there are some important accidents found, in, found a place in media in the last several years. For example, critical structures such as United States Department of Defense, United Kingdom Governmental Services, and even Russian nuclear science lab infected by crypto jacking malware. Well-known streaming platforms like YouTube, several hardware components and game consoles, and big server structures like Amazon Web Services have been infected by crypto jacking malwares. And of course, AOT networks. As we all know, in the last couple of years, AOT devices become the new favorite toy of the attackers. Mirai-inspired botnet attacks use some IoT botnets to perform crypto jacking and create a giant crypto jacking mining pool with the, those IoT devices. There are a lot of other well-known malware types weaponized to perform crypto jacking attack on different IoT device platforms like a, such as Enemy Bot, Spring for Shell, Gulubteba, and Tickbot. And IoT devices are lucrative for the attackers because these devices are not easily configurable by their end users and they have very low level security solutions. So let's have a look at some past uh, detection mechanisms and why they are not very well uh, fit for the IoT detections. Hardware legged features like CPU event, memory activities, hardware counters, and system calls all are perfectly working with the, uh, our traditional computers, but not applicable for IoT devices because they are not programmable to collect these features. Browser specific features like JavaScript compilation times and static source code analysis is very also very good at detecting in browser crypto checking, but it is, they are not applicable with the IoT devices again because IoT devices basically doesn't run a browser. So network traffic is ideal as it does not require any devices to be programmed, collect data from the traffic from any device that basically communicated to communicate it with the internet. It works encrypted traffic and only metadata is needed. Uh, but we still have several problems with the IoT crypto jacking detection because all the techniques, uh, there are very well known techniques such as evasion techniques, such as CPU limiting by throttle functions, minimize communication, and high device diversity and heterogeneous network traffic are where our main challenges. To be able to implement our adversary models and attack scenarios, we created two main uh, experiment sets, crypto checking with service providers and crypto checking with CSC servers. The service providers are the most known distributors of the crypto checking malware. To be able to see the behaviors of service providers, we set up a web page filled with different crypto checking malware scripts, and we also integrated the crypto checking malware into LG's WebOS TV operating system through its HTML compilation libraries. We also modify some binary mining scripts to implement crypto checking malware with CNC servers. After we created our adversary model, we start working on malware detection with network traffic. Network traffic classification and identification techniques have gained a lot of popularity in the last several years, and it is a well-known technique to create user device profiles on both server and local network sites. 
We assume one or more devices in this network are compromised by the attacker to perform cryptocurrency mining on behalf of the attacker. And our topology is basically equivalent of a standard home network. There are several IoT devices inside that communicate with one router and there is only one router communicated with the internet in the home network. And we are we performed our experiments on four different devices representing varying computational powers. Particularly, we performed the experiments of Raspberry Pis, a daily usage laptop, tower server, and LG Smart TV. Raspberry Pi and LG Smart TV represents the IoT devices in a real-life network, while laptop represents a regular device and tower server represents a computationally powerful device. To be able to implement our crypto jacking under a safe environment, we launched the basic WordPress page which contains several different crypto jacking malware. We actually implemented two different versions of this application to observe two different models. These models are realized on the first in the first one CNC server creates its own mining task and in the second model CNC server connects the mining pool to receive the mining task and distribute the victim devices. In this page, you can see our datasets in depth. We collected 11 malicious and 5 benign datasets to perform our expert initial data analysis. The main goal of this paper is to be able to differentiate the malicious and the benign networking data from each other. For this purpose, we perform some initial data analysis on cryptojacking network data. For example, we observed that the cryptojacking data communication process produced smaller packets than a benign internet communication and the PPS rate is much less than the benign PPS rates. We list all of our observations in our paper like uh, IoT devices versus daily, daily devices or host space versus in-browser crypto checking malwares. And finally, overall evaluation. We designed for our sets of experiments to design and evaluate IoT crypto checking detection mechanisms that is accurate, efficient, and works very in configurations and network seconds. So, in first, we designed a set of experiments to design an optimum IoT crypto checking detection mechanism with a highly accurate prediction rate. Second, to assess the success of the mechanism, we designed the scenarios with different adversarial behaviors. Third, we designed a set of experiments to assess a proposed mechanism in various smart home network settings, such as fully or partially compromised networks. And finally, we perform a set of experiments to assess the sensitivity of the proposed classification uh, techniques on imbalanced data sets. After the data set collection and labeling, we created our overall data set contains 1,557,230 malicious and 1,556,890 benign packages. To be able to design a crypto jacking detection system, we decided to use machine learning classifiers. But to make this happen, we first need to take some time. First, of course, we start with the feature extraction. Feature extraction selects best features for raw data sets. The library TSFresh is a Python package that automatically calculates the statistical features from time series data. In our case, we used them packages for each feature vector and it created 788 different significant statistical features from its wide selection of statistical features dataset. We use the same features for all scenarios in models. After the feature selection, we jump into the classifier selection and we basically selected the classifier with the best results. We didn't show it here, but we run experiments on more than 15 different classifiers. To obtain a reference result, we first fit the times of the representative datasets to 12 hours by decreasing the size of the original dataset and if fit them into 6 hours, 3 hours, and final 1 hour. Our model achieved the detecting browser crypto checking with high accuracy with only using less than 10% of the original dataset. It shows that the model we use is not extremely dependent on the dataset size and it can give accurate results even with a shorter data collection duration. As can be seen from the figures, the total time needed for the feature extraction and classification is directly correlated to the dataset size. 
In addition to this, with the very low feature extraction and classification time results, we still managed to get near perfect results. Evaluation with different adversarial behaviors. In this part, our goal is to assess the AIG cryptojacking detection mechanism we designed in the previous section with the various attacks configurations. For this purpose, we first created a balanced dataset for this scenario, in which we create a balanced dataset for each device. In the first scenario, we tested if there are any differences between detection accuracy of the cryptojacking malware running on each device. In the second scenario, we had a look at the throttle values with the throttle adjustments features. Attackers can set the uh, total uh, hardware usage on victims' host devices, and it makes this feature an important use case for our detection mechanism. While increasing the throttle value increases the profit, it also increases the likelihood of being detected by the system. In the last scenario, we tested two main attack surfaces of cryptojacking malware. Our goal in this experiment is to see if our detection system can successfully classify both the in-browser and host based cryptojacking malware with the same set of features. For the results of these scenarios, in scenario 1, we successfully received an almost perfect score from all three experiments we made. The server shows a higher accuracy among all victim device types. The, so there is a higher chance that the cryptojacking attacker will be detected during attack targeting the server type of device. In scenario 2, we observe relatively low results for datasets. And finally, in scenario 3, we can see the effect of the combination of obfuscation methods on in-browser cryptojacking detection samples. The general results for in-browser cryptojacking malware are just one or two steps behind the host-based cryptojacking malware samples. Uh, in scenario 4, we used overall datasets to simulate fully compromised network. And, but in scenario 5, we only one IoT devices and laptop are compromised to be able to create partially compromised network. In scenario 6, we have the most uh, open uh, case for false, pos false negatives because there can be a number of different IoT devices inside home network and there is only one device compromised by the attacker. In our last scenario, we inspired by the scenario 3. In this scenario, we labeled two the IoT devices from different domains as compromised and those are Raspberry Pi and LG WebOS. When we have a look at the results of these uh, last four scenarios, in overall, our crypt files and feature sets successfully detect the cryptojacking malware with high accuracy for all scenarios. At the end of these experiments, we proved that our detection system can successfully detect the cryptojacking malware for the use cases on scenario 8 and 9. In conclusion, we successfully proposed the novel, accurate and robust IoT cryptojacking detection system. We documented our new finding about the cryptojacking malware and showed how different adversarial behaviors that the attackers can use. We tested our detection system under different real-world scenarios. And finally, we shared our dataset and code publicly to, to accelerate research the, in this area. You can find it via the link in this page. Here you can see our references we used inside this uh, presentation. And finally, thank you so much for listening, listening to me. For any questions you have, you can reach me uh, and you can reach me and my lab colleagues from the email addresses and our lab web page here. And you can find all the code, data and other projects uh, inside our GitHub repos. Thank you.